J. Williams. Um, I've tempted to introduce her as the mistress of the boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not supposed to do anything X-rated here today. MJ, I made that promise. MJ didn't. Uh, MJ's originally from the California Central Coast. She now lives in Houston with Layden and her fur children, including two lovely black cats named Vlad and Merlin, and they have their pictures on their Facebook page. Uh, MJ is the author of 14 books, including three Goldie Award winners. She's published over 30 short stories, mostly erotica with a few romances and horrors mixed in. Her latest novel is Model Behavior. She has another novel, <laughs> double in there, uh, another novel, Scene of the Crime, will be available this summer. And she has a short story called Me, Miranda, in the Lone Star Collection. All right. I am reading from um, Model Behavior, and this is, um, there's still a lot of sex in this book, but there's less than in my normal books. <laughs> this one has a little bit of an intrigue angle to it. So I'm going to start reading. The story's about Ronnie, who is a photographer, who um, is sworn off relationships, and so she sleeps with most of her models. And one model, uh, she finally takes to bed and decides this is the one. And that woman's name is Lana. So um, Ronnie and Lana become an item. But Whitney, who Ronnie has slept with previously, doesn't take real well to Ronnie no longer being available. And uh, that's kind of what the story's about. So I'm going to take it from about the middle of the book or so. Ronnie kissed Lana again and got out of bed. She took a quick shower, dressed in her trademark black, ran some gel through her hair, and she was ready. She smelled coffee and smiled that Lana had made it for her. She could really get used to having Lana around. She really, really liked her. She found Lana sitting in her kimono at the kitchen table. She was tempted to take her again, but knew she had to get to work. Instead, she sat and had a cup of coffee with her. Are you up now, Ronnie said? No, I'll go back to bed once you leave. I need my beauty sleep. I disagree with that, but I won't fault you going back to bed. I'd do the same if I could. They enjoyed their coffee and then Ronnie stood. She kissed Lana a slow, slow kiss and promised more of the same at her shoot that afternoon. Ronnie arrived at the studio and set about making coffee. She was sitting down with the cup trying to wrap her head around the first shoot of the day when Whitney showed up, coffee in hand. What are you doing here, Ronnie said. You don't have a shoot today. Do I need a reason to come see my favorite photographer? Whitney, this is getting weird. You're bordering on stalking. Just because I bring you coffee? No, I'm patient. I'm biding my time. I know you'll come back to me. Whoever that trollop is you're sleeping with now won't hold your attention long. And then you'll want a real woman and you'll come back to me. Don't you dare call her a trollop. She's my girlfriend and I don't need you for that anymore. Now take your coffee and leave before I call security. You wouldn't call security on me unless you wanted to see me in handcuffs, but that could be arranged without them. <laughs> Whitney, you're trying my patience. Leave. Fine, I'll go, but I'll be back. Not unless you have a shoot. Whatever. Ronnie watched her leave and let out a sigh of relief. What was she going to do about her? She could get a restraining order, but they had to be able to work together. Ronnie rued the day she'd ever slept with her. She got everything ready for her first model of the day. She, was, she tried to calm herself down enough to photograph her, but she was still shaking with anger. She sat at the small kitchen table and took some deep breaths. Satisfied she could work, she grabbed her camera and waited for the model to come out of the dressing room. The model, Tina, was tall and thin, with shoulder-length brown hair and blue eyes. She was a natural in front of the camera, and the harder Ronnie pushed her, the better she did. Ronnie was pleased when the shoot ended. You did great, she told her. Thanks, it felt good. I've worked with lots of photographers, but I think you're the best. Well, thank you. I hope we'll work together soon. So do I. You're free to put on your street clothes now. Ronnie's stomach growled that she was just about to send Devin out for sandwiches when Lana showed up carrying Chinese food. Yum, Ronnie said. Chinese is my favorite. How did you know? Lucky guess. It's mine, too. Great. They ate their lunch at the table. They both said goodbye to Tina, who came out of the dressing room and left. How was your day been, Lana said. Ronnie thought about it. Should she tell her about Whitney? She decided to be honest. Well, Tina was great, but... But Whitney brought me coffee this morning. Okay, I officially don't like her. Ronnie laughed, you're not alone. Seriously, why won't she leave you alone? 
I don't know. Let's not talk about her anymore. I don't. I want to hear about your day. I slept till noon, showered, got ready, picked up lunch, and I'm here. Sounds like a good day. So far it has been. And someone's, someone promised me treats tonight, so I'm excited. Don't look at me like that. I'm going to have to have you my way with you right here. Oh, no. I'm ready for a shoot. It wouldn't do for me to be on wobbly legs. True. And speaking of the shoot, yeah, I suppose you should go get ready. Ronnie kissed her. I'll see you in a little bit. Ronnie set up the shoot. She used a beach backdrop and had fans in position. She was all set when Lana came out in a one-piece blue bathing suit that brought out her eyes. You're beautiful, Ronnie said. She stepped in for a kiss, but Lana moved away. My makeup, lover boy. You can't mess it up. Right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Let's do this. The shoot went smoothly as Ronnie knew it would. They finished up and Lana, as usual, asked to see the photos. Ronnie scrolled through the pictures for her. Perfect, Lana said. You do such good work. Thanks. You're easy to photograph. The camera loves you. Okay, I'm going to get changed. Do you have any other shoots today? Nope, I'm done. Get back into your street clothes and we'll head home. Ronnie put away all the props and was cleaning out the office, the coffee pot, when Lana emerged in shorts and a golf shirt. She looked amazing and Ronnie felt the familiar tug in her gut whenever she saw her. Are you ready to go, Lana asked. I am, let's get out of here. They walked toward the door, but before they got there, Whitney burst in. Where are you going? She looked at Ronnie and then Lana and then their hands joined together. Oh, is this your model for the night? What are you doing here, Ronnie said. She felt long to try to pull away, but she held her tight. I came to give you another shot to sleep with me tonight, but I see you have other plans. Yes, I do, and I will continue to have other plans. Whitney looked at Lana. Don't believe her if she says she'll be faithful. It's not in her genetic makeup. Actually, I do believe her, Lana said. She may have made some mistakes in the past, but she knows where she belongs now. Mistakes? Ronnie thought Whitney was going to strike Lana. She released her hand and put both of them on Whitney's chest. We're on our way home. Now get out of here. Hey, I know. Why not let me come with you? What? Ronnie and Lana said in unison. Sure, we can have a threesome. Then you'll remember I'm the best. Sorry. You're crazy, Whitney. Now leave before I call security. <clears throat> Afraid I'll show up blondie? I mean it. Whitney looked down at Ronnie's hand, still on her chest. Fine, but any time you're on a threesome, my offer still stands. She left and Ronnie turned to Lana. You okay? Lana only nodded. I'm really sorry about her. She'll leave us alone now. I hope so, Lana said. Thank <laughs> you.